This video is about the chain rule for functions of several variables. Remember the chain rule for functions of one variable. If y is a differentiable function of x, and x is itself a differentiable function of the variable t, then we can compute dy dt as dy dx times dx dt. A similar rule holds for functions of several variables. If z is a differentiable function of x and y, and x and y themselves are differentiable functions of t, then we can write dz dt as partial of z with respect to x times dx dt plus partial of z with respect to y times dy dt. A useful way to remember this formula is to draw a tree of variables. z is a function of x and y. x and y are both functions of t. To get the formula for dz dt, we follow each branch of the tree that terminates in the t variable. That is, we multiply dz dx by dx dt and add dz dy times dy dt. Notice that the partial symbol is used for variables that depend on more than one other variable and the regular derivative sign is used for a variable that just depends on a single variable. Graphically, we can think of z as the height of a function of x and y. If we think of t as time, then we can think of taking a path through time along the xy plane. dz dt is telling us how the height, our height changes over time. We can give an informal justification of the chain rule using the idea of a differential. Recall that the actual change in height of our function, delta z, is approximately equal to the change in height of the tangent plane, or the differential dz. In fact, if our function is differentiable, which we're assuming it is, then we can write delta z as equal to dz plus some epsilon, where epsilon over the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared goes to zero as delta x delta y goes to zero, zero. I can rewrite this by expanding out the differential. That's f sub x delta x plus f sub y delta y. Now I'll divide all my terms by delta t. And from calculus one, I can write dz dt is the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta z delta t. So that's the limit of the expression above. Now the limit of delta x delta t is just dx dt, and the limit of delta y delta t is dy dt. So we're left with having to compute the limit as delta t goes to zero of epsilon over delta t. Since I know that epsilon over the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared is gonna be heading towards zero, I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator of this expression by delta x squared plus delta y squared. I'll rearrange my limit, and now I'll pull the delta t inside the square root sign. As delta t goes to zero, this expression is going to zero by the assumption that f is differentiable, and this expression is just going to the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. This is an expression having to do with arc length, but the important thing for us is that it has a finite value. If we have something that's going to zero times something that's going to a finite value, that's just zero. And therefore, our limit, our dz dt, is just f sub x dx dt plus f sub y dy dt as wanted. Let's use the chain rule in an example. Here, w is a function of three variables x, y, and z, and x, y, and z are all functions of t. Although we've only seen a chain rule for functions of two variables so far, the same thing works for functions of three variables. If we draw a tree diagram with w as a function of x, y, and z, and each of these variables as functions of t, and we write the derivatives on the branches, then we can just multiply down each branch that ends in t and add up our results. 
please pause the video and write out the formula for yourself. You should get the following. To complete the problem, we need to calculate some derivatives. Partial w partial x is cosine of 4y squared z. Partial w partial y is negative x sine 4y squared z times 8yz. Partial w partial z is negative x sine 4y squared z times 4y squared. We also have that dx dt is 2t, dy dt is negative 1, and dz dt is 2. Putting this all together, we get an expression for dw dt. I'll simplify this a little. Now I could rewrite this further by plugging in for x, y, and z their expressions in terms of t. Then I'd have an expression for partial w partial t that was entirely in terms of the variable t. This might look a little nicer, but in general, it's not necessary to do this sort of substitution. There's also a version of the chain rule when z is a differentiable function of more than one variable, here x and y, and those variables, x and y, are themselves differentiable functions of more than one variable, here s and t. Again, I can use a tree diagram to find the formulas. z is a function of x and y, and x and y are both functions of s and t. I'll write the partial derivatives along the branches. Now to find dz ds, I just need to follow the branches of the tree that end in the variable s, here and here. That gives me the formula partial z partial s is partial z partial x times partial x partial s plus partial z partial y partial y partial s. A similar formula for partial z partial t can be found by following the branches that end in the variable t. Notice that this last formula is really almost exactly the same as the formula on a previous page when x and y were just functions of t. And this makes sense because calculating partial z partial t is like holding s as a constant and just thinking of x and y as functions of t. As an example, let's find partial z partial s and partial z partial t in this situation. I'll start by drawing my tree diagram which gives me the following formulas. Next, I compute my partial derivatives. Now I put it all together to compute dz ds and partial z partial t. This video was about computing partial derivatives using the chain rule and with the aid of a tree diagram.